Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Curtis Collicutt. I'm with Oro. And uh, today I'm going to do a quick little demo of doing some high availability stuff. And um, I'll explain that a bit more. But I just want to sort of frame this little demo in terms of uh, if you were a customer and you were going to use Oro to try to put up some sort of highly available like uh, uh, CMS like, uh, or you know, some sort of highly available system. So we're, that's the kind of the perspective that I'm taking uh, for this talk. Uh, so again, yeah, my name is Curtis. I'm the lead OpenStack engineer at Oro, and that's all my information. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is do a quick example of running um, a somewhat highly available Django system. And uh, this is what it kind of looks like. So it's pretty simplified. But uh, basically, we have a, an HA proxy node, three nodes that I sort of call zone nodes that are running uh, the Django application, as well as uh, Galera, a cluster of Galera systems. And so, um, and I'm going to flip back and forth here to the sort of live system, but you can see that uh, right now with HA Proxy we have three nodes up and running, um, and HA Proxy is, is showing that. So what I'm going to do is go over here, and we can see that uh, in our OpenStack tenant um, we have uh, a few uh, servers running. So the HA Proxy node, the, the three zone nodes, and what I'm going to do is. Uh, delete that uh, one of the nodes and then rebuild it. So just quickly we'll delete that. Um, we can see that it's being deleted and then back over here we can see that in HA proxy uh, it's noticed that that node is no longer available because we deleted it. And uh, We'll just kind of watch that. So I'm going to do some stuff and sort of flip back and forth here between the slides. Uh, so what I've done is remove the, the node that has the application and the uh, database, the Galera server on it. So that's been deleted. And uh, what I've done is use Nova command to delete that instance. And once that's deleted, I'm going to rebuild it using Ansible. So I've got a bunch of Ansible playbooks here that sort of separate out this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, tell Ansible to rebuild the node. So you can see that what it's doing is it's uh, noticing that the first two nodes are already there. And now it's going to recreate the, uh, the third node. And so that'll take a little while to run. Uh, so I guess the, the part about doing high availability stuff is often like trying to figure out where all your state is for your applications. So in this example with Django, uh, there's basically like three major pieces of state that you have to keep track of and manage in a high availability manner. Uh, so one of them is the files. So like, for example, static files as well as any files that are actually uploaded into Django. And the way that I'm approaching this to get high availability is I'm using a plugin with Django to upload all, that, all those files into OpenStack Swift, which itself is a highly available object storage system. So once those files are there, I don't have to do any sort of shared file system or uh, other stuff like that, which can get, doesn't, ver doesn't scale very well and um, is hard to run. So you'd say you'd have to run like Gluster or some sort of, scale some sort of file system like that. And that's still going. Uh, so the other uh, two major pieces of state are the actual database that Django uses. Uh, so of course, in this example, that, that's backed by MariaDB, MariaDB which is in a, a Galera cluster. And then there's also the sessions, which are also in the database. So we have those three major pieces of state, and we're keeping them all highly available with a combination of MariaDB, Galera, and OpenStack Swift. So that's still going. Uh, and we'll see how this timing works. I'm not too sure. I've done it like probably 20 or 30 times, but I didn't do any caching or anything of packages and stuff like that, so that might take a little bit extra. But uh, in general, this is a process. So uh, when you make technical choices like this, like say when you use Galera or you use OpenStack Swift, you're, you're making choices, and those choices come with uh, positives and negatives. And generally speaking, if you're familiar with sort of the cap theorem concept, um, 
Maria DB and Galera chooses consistency over availability. And generally speaking, for OpenStack Swift, you get availability over consistency. So you're kind of getting, you're making choices when you do those things. And uh, you have to sort of take that into consideration. Uh, so let's see how that's going here. Yeah, so as you can see up here, uh, Ansible uh, has requested that uh, OpenStack recreate that system and apply a floating IP. So if we look, uh, the, uh, that system should be back, but it doesn't have any of Galera or Django application or anything on it. It's just a plain node. So what I'm going to do now is run another playbook to restore the Galera system. Or actually, one thing I'll do first is uh, SSH into one of the nodes and just show you the uh, MySQL settings. Uh, let's see here, that's zoom dash two. And let me just hop back here to grab that uh, config. Sorry, I'm sort of hopping around a little bit here. Where is that? Here we go. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, show status, like, well, at any rate, I'll just show you the, uh, let's see here. Oh, ah, sorry, I got a little lost here. But uh, what I'm going to do anyways is just run the start the Galera process. So the in the background now, Ansible is going to no use that node that I just created to, and reinstall Galera and bring everything back up online. And uh, after that point, we'll have more than um, we'll have all three nodes back in with Galera. This will take some time actually to do. So, uh, but basically, the restoration process once you delete a node like this is to and what we're doing is first I restore Galera, then I restore the Django environment, and then finally after that I tell HAProxy about the new node. Um, so once it's all back and up, we'll see that the size of the cluster will be back to three, and then I can go on and restore Django. But uh, this will actually take a couple minutes. So does anybody have any questions or pointers so far? <laughs> The idea that I was wanted to do today was actually do a demo because I kind of that was sort of what uh, they suggested that was this was going to be. <laughs> um, but as you can see, what's happening is Ansible is installing all of the uh, required packages and things like that. We can actually hop into that server and and watch what's happening. So you can see it's it's going to be stuck here for a little while, installing all the packages and downloading them and. Um, Yeah. So once, as this process continues to go through, uh, it'll install Galera, reinstall everything, and then it'll also um, restore the database to each node. And that uh, we can sort of watch that as it happens as well. But um, yeah, so this is a demo. We just have to wait for a little while. <laughs> um, no questions or anything? Any ideas? No? Ah, awesome. So now it's installed all the packages. That wasn't too bad. And it's going to go through and reconfigure uh, Galera, install all the configuration files. And then it eventually it, it will uh, restore the database as well. So at this point, we can see that it's uh, doing some backup stuff. So it's using extra backup to uh, e the nodes are talking to one another and it's going to pull that data back into this system. We can kind of see the, the WS rep extra backup stuff happening in the background. And so this node that I'm on in the bottom here is the, is the brand new node. So we can see that it's only been up for a few minutes. And we'll just kind of watch as this happens. Hey. With, with Galera, sorry? Uh, 
Uh, so in this particular example, well, okay, so that's that's part of the problem maybe with uh, doing high availability is the complexity, right? So when you choose to use something like MySQL Galera or MariaDB Galera, you, that comes with some additional complexity for sure. But in this example, actually, I'm using uh, community playbooks. So, so somebody else has already done almost all of this work for me. So in a way, I'm just running Ansible on those using those playbooks, and it's doing it all already for me. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, sure, I can I can throw that on at the end. We can talk about that too. So it just finished off uh, in reinstalling uh, Galera, and we can now see uh, that this node has the Django database reinstalled on it and everything like that. Uh, so the next thing we'll do quickly here is uh, put back Django onto the nodes, also using Ansible. So this is just going to go through and put all the Django code back onto the node. So each node has a copy of the actual code. And yeah, I can show you. Deployment. No. Uh, so you were asking about the playbook. So this is here's an example of. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of roles inside of this playbook. Sorry, the the text on the side might be a little bit small there, but so there's uh, three main Galera sort of roles in the Sansible system. So there's a con there's the common config, and the bootstrap process. So all of the tasks and playbooks are all in here. So this is some of the stuff that's happening when uh, Ansible is running. Does that sort of help to yeah? And this is all open source stuff. Uh, so right now it's just putting back uh, Django. Any other questions or anything or pointers, yeah? Yeah, it's in the cloud. So in this case, um, do you mean like are the are the Galera nodes is are they talking to another one another uh, like over SSL or with encryption or something like that? Yeah, no. So it's all plain, it's all plain text. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So this I in in most clouds, what you're going to get is your own private tenant network, right? So in a way, that's um, you got to hope that that's secure, anyways, right? So I know what you're, yeah, I, th I know what you're getting at. And you could also probably add uh, uh, some encryption, like the over the wire, if you wanted to. But in this example, no, it's all just plain text. Ansible is communicating with them over SSH, so that's encrypted. But everything else is plain text, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so maybe I'll talk a bit about. Um, I'll go down here and talk a bit about uh, the Swift part because that's what's really interesting to me. Um, so there's a, a, a kind of a plugin or whatever you want to call it, a module for Django that allows you to use uh, OpenStack Swift as the storage backend for files. So that does uh, not only static files, but also like any files that you upload into the application. I don't have a good example of a file upload um, for Django right now, but uh, I just didn't have time to do that. But we can uh, see. When we go to the actual uh, admin screen here, oh, what happened? Oh, that's weird. Well, anyways, we can uh, see on the page source that the, oh, this doesn't show that. Yeah, right. That's why I wanted to log in there. Sorry, I just wanted to show you the uh, where the files actually come from. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, I guess because the patchy might be up already, that there's a little bit of a problem there. But uh, when you use Swift with Django, the when you upload files, they actually go up into Swift, and so in a way, it's kind of like a, a CDN in a way. But um, 
Yeah, so that, that gets you away from having to use an actual file system. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that there's similar kind of plugins yet really for other major content management systems like Drupal and stuff like that, but Django definitely does have that kind of thing. And in this slide, I'm just showing you an example of it, when I use the Swift command line, uh, I've configured you know, the Django application to actually use a specific container and all of those static files are in there. And this is an example of the, uh, um, the actual source once you get into the admin page. And you can see that uh, the CSS files are actually coming out of OpenStack Swift as opposed to like the file system that the um, Django is actually on. So now that that's done, we have uh, the demo Django application has been installed. And then finally, the last thing I could do, which is a lot quicker than the rest of the stuff, is to run HA, the run HA, HA proxy um, Ansible playbook and have the HA proxy config restored so that the IP from the new virtual machine is set up in the uh, Ansible config. And I think that should mean that we get this back. Yeah, there we go. So in this page source, we can see that this uh, CSS file is actually coming from uh, OpenStack Swift. And yeah, so sorry, that was a little awkward. But uh, basically, what we did was we had three nodes. We deleted one. And then in you know, a few minutes, we automatically restored everything on that system. And uh, we, everything was still up and running. There's some things we could do to make sure that that actually uh, stayed up when that other things went down. But in general, you know, HA, as far as HA proxy knows, everything's back. And that's kind of it for my little demo. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions or anything like that? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I think Percona is right behind us. And I believe they're the ones that actually have worked on a lot of the Galera stuff. But um, yeah, in general, what you do is you have uh, at, at least three nodes. Or you can have two nodes and then an arbiter. Um, but you need like three systems to sort of ha uh, end up, you know, if one goes down, then you, then they can like make sure that there's enough systems to keep everything running still. I'm not using the right word for that, but, uh, but in general, yeah, you need, in our, that's why I have three nodes. Yeah, it, that's why I have three nodes in our system. And uh, it is, there is some additional complexity to, to running Galera, obviously, but you kind of have to in, in, even in OpenStack world, like that's basically what everybody does to achieve some high availability is to use Galera in the back end of, of, of OpenStack Cloud. So that's what we're doing here. But uh, there is additional complexity, but it's, it's actually a pretty good system. And as you can see, it's really automatable. And you can set it up so that it automatically restores the database and uh, is up all the time. Yeah, so. How long did it take to me to use Galera for this example? Um, I haven't personally had any major problems with it. There's an additional, like, it's, there's some things you have to do in addition to, like, learning how to, you, how to configure it. So there's more configuration options and things that you have to figure out. So there is a bit of work. Um, I don't know if I could give you a number in terms of, it, it's, it's, it's very similar. Like, it's still MySQL in the background. There's just, like, this extra piece that does the clustering for you. Yeah. But it, there is additional complexity, and you do have to learn a little bit about it and mess around with it and play with it and, and figure it out. Probably the biggest thing that people don't get is that you, if you shut all the nodes down and just start them all up again, that doesn't work. Like You can't just bring them all down and bring them all up. One of the nodes has to come up first as a bootstrap node, and then the other nodes can come up. And that's what the playbook was doing already. So that's the thing that people probably get confused with the most, is like they like shut down all the database servers, and they bring them up, and it's not working yet. It doesn't work. One has to come up in a bootstrap node. Yeah. No, just it one. Just one of the nodes has to come up first. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'd have to know, like in terms in terms of um, uh, like data consistency. I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. Yeah. But in general, I usually just restart the first. Like I have the first node that I call the sort of the first node, and I always bring that one up first. Yeah. But uh, that's a good question. It just doesn't. None of them will start. Yeah. Yeah, so it just stops. Like, and people are like, well, why didn't my database come back up? So <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that's all the time that I have. Sorry that was a little kind of awkward and weird. But uh, we did actually delete a node and put it right back and reinstall everything. So uh, that was what I had hoped to accomplish. So <laughs> yeah, thank you.